With grateful hearts, let us continue into our worship as we now um, gather around so that we can hear the word read and proclaimed. So I invite you again, please pray with me as I pray our illumination prayer. Gracious Lord, we give you our thanks and praise for gathering us here in this space, in this place, in this time. And as we hear your word read and proclaimed, open our ears to hear you speak your good news to us. Uh, open our eyes so that we may see you in our midst and see what you are doing and give us uh, um, uh, an empowered mouth so that we be able to speak and say your good news with bold conviction. Open our hearts so that way your word is written upon our hearts, so that we live out this good news as you share it with us today. So may our whole bodies, spirits, and minds, may it all be wrapped with your grace this day as you speak your gentle words to us and strengthen us and nurture us for the journey ahead. We give you all this in Christ's holy name. Amen. We're going to be continuing on in our um, seven marks of a healthy congregation through the Vital Congregations Initiative. We are a part of uh, nine other churches, where there's 10 of us all together here in our presbytery, along with several presbyteries in the denomination that are all walking together at this time in the Vital Congregations Initiative, where we're all looking at answering um, hard questions and thinking of hard questions in this discernment time to see what it will take for us to be healthier than where we are now. And so we take each week to be looking at all these different marks. And uh, we'll be covering some of these again uh, as we go forward, just so that way, that way when we get back to being in person, we can continue on going on uh, downstairs to our fellowship time after worship services to have a potluck and eat together around table while doing a, um, a Bible study that includes all of us in the community at WPC. And so uh, we're going to continue on to the fourth mark today, and that is empowering uh, servant leadership. Empowering servant leadership. And uh, as we do so, um, we'll first look at the scripture that has been uh, selected for us today, and it's going to be coming out of um, the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 20. So I encourage you, if you'd like, to follow along uh, to get your favorite Bible or uh, your favorite Bible app and go to the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 20, as I read it out loud. Let us hear the word of the Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet with, and, and, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter then said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, 
One who has bathed does not need to wash except for their feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For Jesus knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had to return to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you, uh, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. So to go into this text, I love how it sets this beautiful mood. This is right before Jesus is going to be betrayed. This is that time when they're sitting around table where we get the words of uh, institution, where we get this uh, communion and how he re-sets uh, the promises and the symbols of bread and cup. And as he, before he does all this, he does this beautiful gesture to show what it looks like to be a servant and a leader. And this is all said into what some scholars uh, say is the book of glory, which is chapters 13 to 21 in John, where Jesus is on full display. You see who he is and you are witnessing this uh, beautiful man. Uh, doing all, uh, doing and saying all the things that he's been teaching all the way up to this point, and he is now fully here, this uh, Son of God, Son of Man. And so as we look at this text, we see that Jesus is right here beginning to set an example of what it looks like to be a servant leader and how, and how he empowers them to do that. And so as we look at the two words, let's first look at servant. Uh, Jesus, in this text, he, sees, he shows that he is other focused. He's looking at everyone else. He's not talking about himself. He's not focusing on himself. He's focusing on everyone in the room and he loves them. And he wants to give them something so that way they know that when all this stuff happens, they're not going to know it. Now, it's going to be so crazy these next uh, 24 hours that when it's all said and done, when they look back, they'll be able to see how everything has been set up. So he's doing everything he can to care for them. Of course, a servant, he's leading by example of what a good servant is, is someone who is caring for one another, is being able to uh, provide the needs of, of each person, intimately talking to each person, and also recognizing that not everyone in the room likes or knows or, or appreciates what's going on. Eve, he washes the feet of Judas. He didn't say that he excluded anybody. He washes all their feet, even though that not everyone is on board and not everybody's on the same page. He does that it's a beautiful example that there's no exclusion, that everybody is included. And he, I love this movement of him uh, where I see him as trusting in 
with his heart, everyone there. He just trusts that uh, each person is going to be able on their own to process this and to be able to take this all in. And that they, uh, he trusts that they will go through the process themselves. He's not micromanaging them. He's not hovering over them as the servant. He's trusting that they are paying, that they are in the moment. And I love that about that because this is the continual movement that he doesn't have faith in any, he doesn't have faith in the people or the people that he's serving. He doesn't even, he doesn't even really look like the faith for himself. All that faith is in God. He's put and everything goes right to that focal point of that, that through Jesus, we're going right to God, that there is this continual movement that everything that we're doing as a servant, we're doing so out of our faith in God. And then on that leadership part, I love how it ties right into this faith in God that if we're leaders, that, that again, we're not putting our faith into those who we are leading. We're putting our faith in God, that God will give, it, will give us everything that we need and be able to give us the words to speak and the ways to, to live so that way we continue to be an example for to because then this part here is that as a leader, he knows each person in the room. He even knows their faults and he he talks to them in a way where they know that this is that this is someone who deeply knows them. And I love that example because God deeply knows us. And to have Jesus show that example of a leader of these are just faces in the crowd. These are people that I know and I care for. All with the intent of knowing them and caring for them, that they are going to be excellent leaders. He is doing this replication model of being able to say, do as I, and then watch as I do it, then you do it, and then you go out and then teach others. And you can hear that in his messaging of being able to say that, uh, uh, that, um, that I have been sent and whoever receives you receives me and receives God. There's this beautiful lineage of moving outward. Uh, and I love that imagery because as you can, as I can sense it by reading the text, that I get this deep impression that um, Jesus deeply loves each of the uh, disciples, even Judas. And he's driven by love to make sure that they understand at the at the very core of who they are is they take care of each other and they um and they uh love one another and all of this is by his example and so as i say this it's you know uh, and of course there's other parts in there, and I'm sure as you heard the text, you probably heard words that popped out and, re and you really latched onto them as well. So, of course, I'm always inviting that. If you want to um, have conversations with me and, and as you wrestle with the text, I uh, would love it. Because uh, I, I do have that deep faith that uh, the Spirit is resting with you and helping, and helping you discern and give and providing some good news for you that may not that I may not say, but is definitely being said in the word. But as we wrestle with it, I wanted to give an example today of how I learned servant leadership in a very radical way. And so I'm going to take you back to 2012. Early in 2012, I was at a presbytery meeting down in Trace Rios Presbytery in, in West Texas. And as I'm sitting there, I heard some of my uh, pastor colleagues and friends uh, say that, uh, that they, along with some of the members in their congregation, were going to participate in what's called a Tough Mudder. And if you don't know what a Tough Mudder is, go out and Google it. But I'll kind of give you a short synopsis. It's a, at the time in 2012, it was a 12-mile uh, obstacle course where there was something in the vicinity of about 22 20 to 22 uh, obstacles that you had to go through 
And all of them were there to challenge your fear and challenge your strength and, and challenge uh, uh, just uh, your, uh, you know, everything about you. And um, I thought that sounded great. Uh, as a 42 year old, I thought that, hey, man, that sounds like something that would be fun. I uh, hadn't done anything that, uh, that competitive or that uh, strenuous in a long time. So I said that, yes, I would definitely do it. And I, uh, for six months, trained four to five days a week, uh, doing all sorts of different exercises, building my strength, walking, running, to build up that endurance to go the 12 miles along with all the obstacles that were, in the, that were there. That would be in our way, I'm sorry. And so as I was going through this, I was doing it by myself. I was uh, by myself going to do it, but I had a friend of mine uh, that would uh, uh, train with me and he was very, uh, very faithful during that time uh, as I was going through uh, my training. And uh, uh, to give you an idea of kind of what it looked like, uh, it's uh, many folks are participate in um, circuits or and then um, I'm trying to oh, CrossFit um, exercise and CrossFit training. I was doing that in 2012, that, those kind of exercises and those kind of routines um, to get myself ready. Um, because it, it's basically like a 12 mile version of American, American Ninja, right? It, all these different things that you have to do. And some of those, uh, some of those things that you see on the American Ninja were the exact same things that I had to do uh, on the obstacle course when I when we went through it in 2012. And so I tell you all this because then I, um, as uh, I would keep in contact with my teammates, but then uh, the I mean, there was like uh, 16 of us all together that drove to Austin, Texas, back in October of 2012, and. Uh, arriving, we could see, uh, the, you know, I had to hand in my sheets of uh, uh, the waiver that said that uh, I'm taking all this risk. Uh, I'd take a waiver that if I needed to have well, all the medical information, I need to have it if I got hurt. And then my third waiver, which was in the event of death, <laughs> uh, what, uh, what to do. I mean, that, that's how crazy I was. And I was so worked up by it. Uh, so I had a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety about it, but I was also really excited. It was that uh, where I was having the tension of both. And all of us were kind of feeling that way as we began going. And of course, as we're there, you're seeing helicopters taking people to the, uh, to the hospital. So it's, it's a real deal. I mean, it, it's, uh, it does test you. And so we go out and we start, we get the we, uh, start and we pray together. And then uh, get a big motivational speech right before we set out, and then we go out on the course. And now through these courses, uh, the reason that I learned student uh, servant leadership is because this tests everything about you. You only have one goal, and that's that. We our goal was that everybody finishes, and our team, every one of us, was going to finish. That was our goal, and we were going to do everything we can to help each one of us finish the race. And, uh, and that was pretty much the uh, goal of everybody that was participating, is that no matter if their team was two, one or two or three or large like ours, we were going to finish that race together uh, and finish it. And, uh, uh, and so we set out, and so there was, uh, the very, one of the very first obstacles is jumping off of a cliff into the water down below uh, just to get yourself, get that blood pumping, right? And then as, uh, and then after, uh, and after that, uh, then there was, uh, oh gosh, electrical fences, crawling underneath the barbed wire, uh, going through, dry diving into the water that was ice cold and then had to hold your breath, go under an obstacle and come out the other side. Uh, uh, two or three obstacles that had fire, had to either jump over them or, or maneuver around them. Definitely had electricity in two or three of the, uh, where there was li literally live wires with uh, several uh, volts 
coursing through them to give you a little bit of a reminder that they're there. Uh, like I already said, barbed wire. And then also uh, tons and tons of mud uh, uh, all around. And then different rope courses and climbing using ropes, going across the wall, going down into a pit of mud and then getting out the other side. Uh, uh, just all sorts, I know, in a large uh, bale of hay, bales of hay, you had to go over this mound of hay to get on the other side uh, was another one. And then of course, going over walls, going up a sloped wall, like very much like uh, where, uh, American Ninja, where you have to go up a sloped wall so they can hit the buzzer. You had to do that. Uh, all sorts of uh, different uh, obstacles. And halfway through at the six mile mark, there for one mile you had to literally go through mud that was knee high over obstacles for an entire mile of nothing but just this mud okay so that that's just gives you an idea of all the things that we had to do and in this as we were hitting each one if we knew what we were supposed to do we became the leader if we had if we had no idea we so we sat back and watched as uh, someone led us through uh, each one of the obstacles and we helped one another uh, we took uh, it wasn't like one person giving out orders it was uh, for each one of the obstacles there, there was a different person quite literally that was saying here let's do it this way and to, so that all of us can accomplish the goal uh, like uh, one of them uh, for me early on was the big bales of hay um, I uh, as a kid uh, baled hay and uh, stacked hay so I knew how to get up hay and for a small man like myself and just me doing anything quickly is, is, it, a, is it crazy but I boom, zipped right up there and to the point where I showed people where the foot paths to go and literally went, came, went up and down four or five times pick, uh, helping people uh, accomplish the goal. And uh, we, and then, uh, and, and that, and other times, other people were doing the same thing for me if I was having problems. And uh, about uh, two thirds of the way through, I injured my shoulder. Uh, you know, going over ropes, there was a la rope ladder. And as I was trying to get up over the top, my shoulder just went. Uh, luckily, it was just pulled muscles. Um, I didn't tear anything, thank goodness. But, uh, but, I made it to the point where I couldn't use my left hand and being left-handed uh, uh, that took me out of uh, my game for a little for the rest of the way. So I wasn't able to do uh, four of the obstacles because you needed to use your arm to either go across the ledge or climb over a wall, um, that kind of stuff. So, uh, so I, so I, uh, so I, uh, from that point on, I just said, if I can't do the obstacle, I'm going to help every one of my teammates um accomplish that goal and shortly thereafter another one of our teammates um injured his ankle where he then couldn't do some of the uh, uh, uh obstacles but at times we literally were uh two people acting as one where he could lean on me and he could help me uh and uh guide me even though i was one arm short and he was one leg short uh, we really helped each other finish the race together. And, uh, and it was that beautiful movement of communication and um, trusting in one another and, and, and just putting our faith in God that we were going to be able to do this. And we, and, and it was the other, and we all, and both of us uh, helped as many, uh, all of our teammates to accomplish, and even other teams. If they were short, if they only had teams of two or three, we even helped them because we knew that we couldn't do it ourselves, but we sure could help others achieve the goal of that obstacle. Uh, and so as we kept going through the race and uh, um, striving to get to the end, uh, one of my favorite uh, pictures of, of, the, of that Tough mutter is the very last obstacle. They have these wires, that are these exposed wires that have charges, uh, have all this electrical charge going through them. And you had to run through like, I wanna say like 20 yards of these electrical wires just to get to the finish line. And as we were watching people, if they were skinny and then lean muscle, 
boy, it really hurt them. You could see it, uh, you could see them just uh, cringing in pain. And my friend who uh, injured his ankle, he was one of those people. <laughs> and I had, were going through a lot of those obstacle courses, uh, going through that and getting hit with electricity a couple different times. I hardly ever felt it. As you can see, I have what they call insulation, right? <laughs> so when the electricity hit me, it just tingled, except if it hit me in the face. But if it was any other place, I just, I could barely feel it. And so I just said, hey, to finish this race, get behind me. And we're just gonna go through. And he's, he, he uh, grabbed around my waist and we went. And uh, as we we're going through, what I didn't know is that there was two or three other people that were uh, that didn't want to get hit with all that electricity, and they followed right along. And so that last that last bit to get to the to get to achieving our goal, uh, I took the whole brunt of all that electricity so that they didn't have to. And and I could because it did, it didn't hurt me, and it was amazing because again, cat, and then when we finished and we had our time of talking, we prayed afterwards and just uh, enjoyed the experience together because all of us made it. Not all of us were able to do all the obstacles, but we did that 12 miles that day, and uh, we did participate in every obstacle. And uh, uh, and it was amazing to have that experience because after that time, I realized that, that this is what it meant when Jesus was washing the disciples' feet, that Jesus loved us and this love and compassion and care that the goal is to finish and finish strong. And we're all going to do this together. And as we do so, we care for one another and let each one of us with our gifts and our talents and our strengths rise to the occasion and celebrate each other in that moment. And that changed on how I, look, how I thought I should be as a leader in a church. It changed how I thought about being a servant and it changed about how I thought of me as being a Christian. And I will never forget that. And, and as a part of our uh, the experience, the uh, teammate of mine, my friend that injured his ankle, he gave us each a cross that he cut from uh, rocks that he found there by our, by there in Austin. And he cut these out for each one of us so that we would never forget how we put all of our faith in God that day. And that we all had uh, one common goal and that we all uh, cared and loved for each other. And we all succeeded at different points in that journey and, uh, and all through the love of Christ. And I just, uh, and I, I cherish this, it's in my office and I, uh, I have it on my desk to remind me every day of uh, how to be a servant leader. And so that's where uh, my example of a servant leader. And so uh, please, to take in your own, uh, so, uh, so I'm gonna invite you to do the same thing that I just did of uh, what does it mean to you to be a servant leader? Because we have to realize that when we read these texts, we are there. That's why they're written, so that we can place ourselves there. We are in that upper room when Jesus is washing the feet of the disciples, he's also washing our feet. And so we get to see Jesus, this beautiful example of someone, that, of God who created us, of Jesus who calls us to come and follow. And then through the cross that he's about to go on, he's going to teach us the depth, width, breadth of what forgiveness and compassion looks like what does uh this person who says he's coming to save the world what does that look like he shows us part of it on this cross and then the other part of it when he walks out of a tomb and that empty tomb helps us to understand that we've been restored and revived and refreshed to serve daily and to lead daily because of this beautiful um, servant leader who by example shows us how we literally are to act with one another, even to the point of loving our enemies. He covers it all. And all we have to do is watch, listen, 
and then learn as God, as the Holy Spirit writes it upon our heart to then live that out. So let's do that. Uh, as we uh, prepare to go into this time for the week, here are three questions I'm going to give you so that you can wrestle with the text this week. Uh, you don't have a lot to do, right? Most of you are going to be staying in home, can't get out much. So spend time in prayer instead of on uh, telephones or TVs or or what or on the internet or whatever. Just spend some time with the text and, and wrestle with this. I encourage you and invite you to do that. So here's the first question. What does it mean to you to see Jesus wash the feet of the disciples? What does that mean to you? Okay. And then furthermore, what does that mean to you to have Jesus wash your feet? What does that mean to you to have Jesus wash your feet? The second question is, how has servant leadership been modeled to you uh, throughout your lifetime? How, who are those people? Who, who are the ones that modeled servant leadership? Have you ever had servant leadership modeled to you? A second one. Third question is, what gifts from God, what, what gifts, as you know, spiritual gifts and just gifts have been given to you by God? God's blessed you with these gifts. And then how can you use those gifts to be a servant leader? Okay, so again, uh, the questions are, what does it mean to have Jesus wash the feet of disciples and also wash our feet? What does that mean to you? Second thing is, how has servant leadership been modeled for you? And the third thing is, is what gifts that have been blessed by God, that God has given to you, that what blessed gifts, what are these gifts of the Spirit, these gifts that have been given to you, what are, the, what are those gifts, and then what does it look like to use them to be a servant leader? And so I hope that you have been able to enjoy that, that just kind of this, this look at servant leader, because I, I encourage you uh, to, to be one. Uh, and, uh, and as I am being encouraged to be one, as we walk this uh, faith together, as we serve our Lord together uh, through this unique time with many obstacles in our face, knowing that we are all walking this race together. Amen. And so it's almost time for us to go. But before we do, we're going to do some more singing. Woohoo! All right, are we excited? I am. So again, with Jan and Carolyn, they're uh, gonna get ready for us as we sing our sending hymn today, called as partners in Christ's service. Let us sing out loud or enjoy this or enjoy the beautiful music. Here we go.
have had an opportunity to be in worship for just these, these few minutes. Uh, and it has been so wonderful to be worshiping with you. Thank you for joining along today and finding us on our YouTube channel. Uh, there'll be many more of these to follow. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'll also be thinking about maybe posting some devotionals and stuff along the way, depending on how much further uh, this all this uh, unique time goes, this, you, however long this season is going to last. But as we leave here today, know that, uh, I, that we thank you for sp to spending some time with us today and that we have been empowered to go and serve each other and when and we will have unique times where it's our turn to lead and have confidence that God is with us and God trusts us. God loves us to do amazing things, even things that we didn't think we could do. God knows that we can. And so with that kind of faith in God, Boy, it would be amazing to see how we love and serve one another in a unique time such as this. So I encourage you all in this time to continue to glorify God in everything that you do and continue to reflect the love of Jesus Christ to all that you see online and the people that you interact with through uh, all sorts of different social media platforms and even when people come to your door. And you have those moments where you have face-to-face -face conversations. And always know that the Holy Spirit is wrapping around you, nurturing you each step of the way, and reminding you that you are not alone, that we are in this together. So thank you, my friends, as we leave this place today and leave this time, knowing that our service, yes, here has ended, but our service to the Lord is just beginning. Oh, and I almost forgot that there's going to be a link right here uh, following this video that's going to show you, and here it is right now, and it's showing you a link that, uh, that you can go to, uh, to for Zoom, to go through the Zoom and just look at that uh, 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 link that's there. And if you're on computer, you should be able to go ahead and just go plug in that link. And uh, at 11 o'clock uh, a.m. on Sunday, from 11 to noon, we're going to do our online fellowship time. And we invite you to come on and just, uh, just give some time to be in community. Even though we can't do it in person, we sure can do it online. So we'd love to have you come and be a part of our fellowship time. So one more way to uh, embrace each other on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Peace be with us all. Amen.